Hey guys, Toby's here. It has been a while that I didn't publish any kind of video because I am busy with my master thesis. However, recently I got a little bit time, so I built this. This is a Kawaii useless robot. This robot only do one task, which is when you try to push the switch to the on position, it turns itself off by pushing the switch back to the off position. I've always been wanted to build one of these robots for a long period of time, but building one of these robots requires so many skills including electronics, PCB design, and firmware programming that it takes me a lot of time to learn and practice this skill before I can really build one. In this video, I will tell you where the ideas come from, how this robot works, and walk you through the process on how I design and manufacture it. Let's start with the origin of this robot design. Around 12 years ago, there was a Japanese maker named Kairoshi. He created the world's first kawaii useless robot that moves and displays facial expression using a dot matrix display. The issue with his design is that his design is not reproducible. In his design, he teared down an existing LED matrix display module and reroute the PCB using UEW. Moreover, the stepper motors and battery system he used is also special made. That means if I'm going to build something similar, I'm gonna replace these parts with more modern off-the-shelf parts. This design helped reduce the complexity when people trying to reproduce my design by my open source schematics, as well as reduce the cost of the overall build. During my research on how to build this robot, I found out that this robot indeed have a mass manufacturer version. However, it is using some simple mechanism that doesn't provide LED matrix, animation, or movement. So I decided to build it from scratch, and this is how I made the same robot 12 years later. When designing this robot, I decided to start from the front side to the back side. So the first module you will see on the front side of the robot is the LED matrix display. There are a total of 512 LEDs in this robot and obviously I cannot control it one by one using one GPIO per LED from the MCU. That is why a dedicated IC are required for each of the LED matrix module on this matrix board. After considering the required circuitry for the display module and it is really complex, so I decided to make a PCB for it. The PCB consists of two sides, include the LED matrix module on one side, and a current setting resistor located in the gap between the LED matrix module and the PCB. And on the other side of the PCB, it consists of 8 MAX7219 LED matrix driver IC. This IC has built-in shift register, so you can chain them together and require as minimum as 3 GPIO to control the signal. Behind the LED matrix module is the stepper motor driver circuitries and servo connector. The driver PCB is designed to sit just 5mm above the display module. And on the side here, you will see 5 cables connecting the display module to the driver board. This helps simplify the connections design between the driver board and display module to the MCU as two boards can share the same FFC cable on the bottom of the robot and connect directly to the MCU board. For the final PCB, it is the MCU board. It contains a charging circuit which is based on the IP5306 power management IC and a programming circuit based on CH340. And on the edge of the PCB, you will find an ESP32. This is the ESP32 E variant which contain two cores and onboard Wi-Fi function. All three PCB combines provide the required electronic controls, drivers, and programming space enough to power up and operate this kawaii robot to do its kawaii things. Talking about the structure of this robot, this robot is definitely one of the most complex projects I have ever built with 3D printing.
As you can see, the internal components are tightly packed with nearly no space in between. In the center compartment, you will see two stepper motors used for driving the wheels and two servo for pushing the top cover and the switch. On this angle, you will see better on how the pushing arm is drive by the servo to push the switch. And the wheel of the robot sit in this indented space on the edge of the robot structure. When the case is installed, the wheels will get hidden inside the robot body. And for such a complex structure, obviously I cannot design it with just pen and paper. I use CAD software to design the structure and test fit everything before I start my production process. And for some of the parts that require light tilting, like the stepper motors installation right here, I printed out the CAD files and compare it with a physical stepper motors to make sure everything aligns with my CAD designs. And the process of making mock-ups and aligning all parts and make them fit inside these robot bodies takes me around 2 months, which is one of the most time-consuming procedures when building this robot. By the way, the wheels are not actually wheels, but a 3D printed plate with a rubber ceiling ring that usually used in PVC pipe. Interestingly though, it do acts like a wheel and, and works perfectly as a wheel. The software is written in C++ with Arduino IDE and utilizing the free RTOS features so that I could use both of the cores and do different things on different cores. In the primary core, the primary logic is handled there, including wireless connections, stepper motors control, and more. And on the secondary core, the animation rendering and display driver are handled. So the second core will handle loading animation frames from the SD card and rendering the frame buffers to the LED matrix display. The communication between cores are done with mutex and semaphore, where a few variables are storing the animation code and allow the animation core to handle the rendering by itself. One of the difficulties in writing firmware for this robot is the number of shift registers required to operate. Shift registers are really helpful when you are running low on GPIO pins. However, they also require lots of cycle counts in order to shift data into it. And it usually blocks other process running when the data is being shifted into the shift register, especially when you are programming in multi-core and multi-thread situations. As the stepper motors and the display module are both powered by an independent set of shift registers, two dedicated cores are required to operate them in order to prevent blocking over each other's rendering process. Lastly, let's talk about the animation. The animation is done by a really naive approach of writing the bytes into a file stored on the SD card. When the logic wants to render an animation frame, the target frame is read from the SD card and loaded into the frame buffer. And the animation rendering routine will render the frame buffer onto the LED matrix module by shifting each of the bytes into the LED matrix driver IC. Each of the frame contains 512 bits of data, which is not possible for you to manually plot them into a file. So instead, I developed a web UI to generate this file using JavaScript. On the web UI, you can simply select and click the LED you want to light up and draw a facial expression on it. Afterward, you can export the emotion file as a binary file and put it on the SD card. This way, anyone can create their own facial expression for this robot. One more interesting feature is that if you push the switch before you power on the robot, the robot will enter wireless control mode and you can connect to it using your phone's browser. This feature is really helpful when you are trying to debug something mechanical. Every year, I will build some cool and interesting things to challenge my programming and electronic design skills. And this is my project of the year. I learned quite a lot of skills regarding programming in RTOS, how to design and develop prototypes with high density two layer boards. I hope this video interests you, and if you want to build something similar, you can check out my Git repository. See you in the next video.